Hi guys, this is Tekhauri. I welcome you to this video tutorial on implementing JWT refresh token in existing Angular application with ASP.NET Core. In the last video tutorial, we created the global error handler method, and in this video tutorial, we will modify the login method in the account service.ts file. Now, inside the login method, since the grant type, when we call the API is going to be password and not the refresh token as we have it here in the refresh token method so let's go ahead and create a constant variable that's never changing and the value for this will be password now the next thing that we want to do is we need to change this uh, URL that we are calling now if we scroll up we will see that the base URL login is calling the account controller and the login method within the account controller class. Since we have a single method now which is the auth method, whenever we call this method depending on the grant type if it's refresh token or if it's password, the request will be handled accordingly. So we need to change this base URL login to our URL token method so base URL token uh, object which holds the value for the URL for auth, auth API now the values that we would need to pass is the username the password and also the grant type So when the request is made, these three values will be passed to the parameter. And now we will pipe the result. And first thing that we want to do is set our local storage values for JWT username, login status, expiration time and user role. Since the value that we are going to receive from the result will be stored inside result or tokens. First thing that we want to do is auth token dot token so the auth token array contains the token so you have to change this as if you go to the account controller i'm sorry to the token controller you scroll down and you see the create access token method when we are sending back the response we are sending it as an encoded token uh, and that is going to be an auth uh, token that we are going to send in the response so here so it should be auth token so make sure that you change that to auth token also you can update the spine here inside the method where we are returning the odd token inside the generate new token method I forgot to add the e there so it's fine so it's fixed so when we receive the result it's going to be odd token now save this also next thing that we want to do is change these values here because we are no longer getting the username token and expiration values from result we're getting it from the auth token array so we have to make sure that we change these to result dot auth token dot the token and so on now the next thing in this method that we want to change is we are checking if the value of the jwt token is null in our local storage based on that we are handling the request here so now we don't want to log out the user if there is a token or if the token is expired we want to create a new token so first thing that we want to do is here we want to make it not equals to null if our token in local storage not equals to null or it is not equal to undefined then we want to return it through response and here we don't need this additional code to decode and verify if the token is uh, expired so we will get rid of this additional code
So we're checking if there's a login cookie, which means the status is equal to one, then check if the token is not equal to null or undefined, then return true. And if the, if the value is equal to null, then return false. So let's save this. That's all the changes that we need to do in account.service.ts file. The next change that we want to do, we need to modify the login file. So let's go to the login component, go to login component.ts. And here, if you notice, we have the result.user role. As we all know, we have to change it to result.autoken. So first thing that we will do here, let token is equal to result dot dot token dot token and then the we will console log the token itself to see what value we get and here we also want to change this to let this is no longer user role so it's auth token dot roles roles user logged in successfully invalid login is set to false turn url everything else pretty much remains the same and the error message so we don't have to change anything else over here so let's go ahead and build this application again build group so application build was successful now let's go and run this just make sure that your server is running and you have your uh, azure data studio up and running so we can check what values we received also create a test product for testing purposes in the products table let's run this application now so the application is running let's click on login also go to the inspect tab we will verify what values we receive on our console login with the test user credential so we logged in successfully we logged in as a customer the role was printed this is the token so that's what we did over here we printed these values now let's go and test the products it's loading fine also we have to test the token refresh functionality so let's test if the token is expiring and it's loading again keep refreshing Yes. Let's make sure I forgot to tell you one more thing that is inside your startup.cs file you have to set this to zero. I think I told you about this. Also in your app settings.json file I've changed this to one minute, the expire time. So for testing purposes to test if after one minute the token if it expires and a new token is generated so as we see one minute past token was expired new token is generated and the token is refreshed now let's go ahead and test what values we received here so at the moment the value is e9 d22 refresh this and it's changed to C397AC. If I had to go and check uh, local storage dot refresh tokens value, it is C397AC and it should match the database. So after one minute, this token will again expire and we will generate a new token, JWT and refresh token. So if I had to check JWT tokens value, hit enter, and the value is, let's say it's ending with F, G, H, M, M. Now, if I 
I think one minute is passed again. So if I had to refresh this, new token is generated. See, the there was an unauthorized result. It was handled. New token is generated. Now if we check the values of JWT, it is changed. And also if we check the value of refresh token, it's 5E46DB. If I go to database, run this query, 5E46DBC. Five, five so everything works fine. Our users can also uh, move on different components, use the nav links, and there's no errors. And once again, don't forget to change this to 1 if you're testing and you can then change it back to 60 because i would recommend you to leave the token for at least one hour because you don't want users to uh, make api calls to your database every minute that's going to cause to, it will be very resource intensive so this should be it for this video tutorial so we have successfully implemented refresh token in the existing website developed in angular and asp.net core this also means that we have ended this tutorial series if you have any questions you can use the comment section and you can ask me those questions i'll try my best to respond the code for this is available this tutorial is available in devops repos also we'll soon be posting a new project the new project will be just giving you a demo will be an angular app once again but we will have a dedicated admin panel where we will be using this dedicated admin panel to create image galleries of uh, add featured products and so on in the existing application so in our existing application we so far don't have any dedicated admin panel we are just using it an admin panel based on the user role uh, in the front end that's in the client app but we will have a dedicated admin panel that will be used to manage the application from back end and the code also will be provided to you guys uh, we will code this application in uh, small sections where first we will learn how to create image galleries from the back end and update the database and then show it in the existing angular application so we'll integrate this uh, backend system in our angular application where we just implemented JWT token functionality So if you have not watched the first video series where we developed the base application then you might find it difficult, but I Will recommend you watch the video tutorials if you have time if not then just go through the code because we will not teach you to Code the application from scratch because we have already done that so once again like and subscribe my channel and if you have any questions use the comment section thank you